Greetings trainers, my name is Screwblitz and welcome to a whole brand new adventure on my YouTube channel. As many of you may have noticed, as starting off today, my channel will basically be rebranded to the greater good. Not only in terms of the character avatar with the whole Professor Kuroblitz thing, but also to my all new banner and I have to thank everyone in this 3 week time spent since my last video for the over 250 subscribers we got 270, thank you so much everyone, but before starting the video I want to make a few shout outs to people who helped me with this channel rebrand. So the creator of this character avatar, Lucas Tadeo on Twitter, he's an amazing any pokey artist, make sure to follow him. And the creator of my YouTube banner, Infamous Trainer, another great any pokey tuber, make sure to follow him as well, now here on YouTube. And before starting out the video, I just want to say that I am a member of two great any pokey communities and also, you know, podcast people here on the on the platform. I am a member of the Poke Chat Live that goes uh, set mostly on Wednesdays and Saturdays, hosted by our our boy Goggle Master and Trayman One, and also on Twitch by um, I'm a member of the Poke Comrades with Aleximo and Xanolint. Make sure to follow these incredible people on every sort of social media platform. I'll leave the links in the description below. Also, guys, thank you so, so much. Shout out to Ionic Bond, formerly known as Shiny Zoroark, for trafficking my biggest problem with Pokemon Journeys video that it's now after five weeks, five weeks, it reached 5,000 views. 200 comments, um, two, 200 likes, 100 comments. Thank you, Ion. Thank you so so much. Also, also uh, trafficking. Also, shout out to JPRPT98 because he did a similar video. Make sure to follow all of these amazing people in any sort of social media platform. We are a great community. We are a big family. All in the love for Pokemon and mainly for the Pokemon anime. And this is what I am here to talk about today. Today, I'm here to talk about the potential for the return of the greatest rival of our boy, Alola champion Ash Ketchum for the Pokemon Journeys anime and that is the return of the Diamond and Pearl rival for the Sinnoh Saga, the one and only Paul, the anti-thesis rival, the one that stands for everything that Ash stood up against. Paul, also known as Chinji in the Japanese media. Paul was a postponed concept of the rival Silver from the Gold and Silver games that it kind of makes sense considering that Sinnoh was going to remake Johto in some capacity but the character of Paul it's a must in regards to returning to Pokemon Journeys not only for our boy Ash for the World Coronation series in order to defeat the Supreme Monarch Leon but also to help Go in some capacity and I know that people are not not a fan of Go but in terms of Paul they will see the character of Go, of Go in a whole new light specifically because of this former but still on rival of Ash. So in regards to Paul we know that Paul is from Veilstone City and in Veilstone we have the character not only of Maylene that Ash technically never defeated and since she's a fighting type gym leader B might battle her for the World Coronation series and we might see a Lucario showdown between Maylene and Ash maybe we see a moment between uh, Go and Reggie like how Go had with Gherkin when Ash battled Corina. there are possibilities here and especially with the Sinnoh remakes and also the Sinnoh prequels of Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl and Legends Arceus there are, you know, amazing possibilities for this to happen. Now, in regards to the whole character of Paul, he's the perfect rival. After the soft rivalry that Hash had with Gary in OS, and the unexistent rivalry besides himself that Ash had in Advanced Generation, the character of Paul was written specifically to end Ash's career in DP, but sadly, OLM and Team Kato had different plans and after 11 years, we are where we are today with Pokemon Journeys. We do know that the character of Paul is, you know, 
Uh, it's liked by many, despised by some, especially because of the character of Chimchar, that it's most likely one of the best aces that Ash has and one of the most recognizable starter Pokemon that also Ash has. With no needs for Mega Evolution, power-ups, he was just, you know, a small monkey with big dreams and now, you know, we do have possibilities for this character, maybe with Cinderace, maybe with Grookey, we don't know. But the idea that the character of Paul is the most intriguing character, the most intriguing rival, and the most likely for Ash to meet in his journey's run, it's because Paul already battled leagues that Ash battled before. In the episode when Paul battled the Pyramid King Brandon, we do know that, um, Paul, when he started his journey with Turtwig, that, you know, uh, his brother Reggie and, and his Drapion, which most likely inspired Paul to get a Drapion as well in the future, and later on, you know, defeated Ash's half-team in the, in the Sinnoh League. But anyways, the idea that, you know, Paul battled um, other leagues, it is very interesting because it places Paul on the same level as Ash was in Diamond and Pearl. Bulbapedia, again, but Bulbapedia are many times wrong. They once stated that Paul was 11, so it wouldn't make his Diamond and Pearl run the second run of Sinnoh, but that's a lie. Um, he most likely started in a foreign region, like how Sawyer did for Kalos in X and Y and Z, instead of, you know, going into Owen. And speaking of Owen, I think that Owen was the first region that Paul went through. Because of the power of Regirock, um, maybe Paul actually went to Hoenn while Ash was in Kanto and Orange Islands. He went to Kanto while Ash was in Johto, and he went to Johto while Ash was in Hoenn and in Kanto's Battle Frontier, and they met in Sinnoh. And uh, I guess that it's, you know, a very likely possibility for reasoning why their paths never crossed until, you know, the beginning of Diamond and Pearl. Not to mention that the idea that Paul went uh, from Hoenn, Kanto, and then Johto, it kinda explains, you know, I would love to see, you know, Paul's, you know, quote-unquote humble beginnings, you know, with his team, like, you know, with Hoenn, you know, he has Turtwig, and then he got, you know, Makuhita, Aeron, and also Snowrunt. Um, in Kanto, he gets the Gruttle, and he gets, you know, Nidorino and Magmar, and then Johto, he gets his well-known Torterra, and he gets the team that he most likely, you know, brought to Sinnoh, to Sanjum Town, to Rowan's Laboratory, where he met Ash. And uh, if you see Paul's team, you know, Paul never had a Dragon or a Psychic type, which kinda explains why Tobias had Latios, my favorite Pokémon the secondary honorary mascot of this, of this, you know, now channel, <laughs> um, plug here. But anyways, um, and Paul never had, you know, fairy types. So, and that's the thing, like, um, if you see the character of Paul and his roster for a guy who traveled the same regions as Ash, it's kind of like, you know, a small roster and, you know, very underwhelming. So, it kind of brushes me off in the wrong way that many Pokemon suffered the release, you know, the release fate of Stantler or the given away or the given away fate of Azumarill. So just because Paul has the Pokemon that he has today, it doesn't mean that he had, you know, other ones in the past. And because of their misperformance in the leagues, in Paul's eyes, Paul most likely, you know, lost Hoenn, Kanto, and Johto, and uh, maybe he released, you know the unwanted members of his team, which is kind of like the point that I want to tackle upon Go later on, because Go sees Pokemon as his friends, Paul got his redemption, but, um, and I really want, you know, for Go to realize kind of sort of the situation, but that's for a later point. Um, there is also the possibility that, yeah, Paul was strong, but what if in the first round of every league he kind of, you know, had uh, the fate of Trip in Unova and lost in the first round? Or maybe... It could have been like, you know, Ash. If Ash battled Gary in the first round of Kanto, Ash would have lost. Because that's the thing about being a skilled trainer. It's all about, you know, your power, but it's also about, you know, the luck of the brackets. Maybe Paul had the, f 
the trip fight three times in a row and um, he battled someone stronger than him because there's always someone stronger than you. Gary was the one that taught that to Ash after the Orange Islands and the Battle Frontier. Heck, the character of Gary is what made Ash go to Sinnoh and meet Paul in the first place. And maybe that's why Paul, like, we don't know who Paul lost to. Maybe Paul lost to, you know, um, one of the main other characters because Ash is red. Maybe he lost to Jimmy, Lucas or even Brandon to some capacity. That's why he kind of, you know, doesn't like Ash from the very beginning. It feels like forced and out of, and out of character for Paul. But if you have these factors in consideration and these Ash-like characters who give a similar vibe, it kind of explains why Paul always had that previous animosity towards Ash. Again, I love the character of Silver. We did see Silver, you know, in the op in the crystal opening, you know, for the Legend of Thunder. And sadly, we never got the rocket plot with Giovanni. Here's hoping, thanks to Let's Go Johto in the future, because if they outsource Masuda for the remakes, they can outsource Masuda for a Let's Go Johto. And uh, if this is Ash's final journey, it should also be Team Rockets. Make Silver happen. You postpone Silver to create Paul, you postpone Wally to create Sawyer, and if you guys have Rinto, you can have Silver return, you know? Uh, just saying, it's a wishful feeling of mine. But yeah, after Ash defeated Paul, um, Paul, was, Paul went to battle Brandon and the Regis, you know, in Snow Point for the Battle Pyramid. Maybe Paul decided to challenge the Battle Frontier like Ash and Reggie did, so Paul never stopped. I'd like to believe that Paul never stopped traveling. He most likely did the Kanto Battle Frontier while Ash was in Unova. He most likely did Unova while Ash was in Kalos, and he most likely did Kalos while Ash was in Halola. Maybe there he got the Mega Agron. Maybe there he battled Elima. We don't know. It would be a great idea if they, you know, somehow explain this, you know? Not to mention that um, uh, my friend Trey actually mentioned that one day Paul might challenge Ash for the Alola Champion title defense. Not because Paul wants to be the Alola Champion, but because he wants to, you know, battle Ash one more time and when the stakes matter the most because Ash is defending his title that he earned. Heck, Paul might be challenging the Galar League for all that we know of. He might have caught one of the Regis in the Crown Tundra. There are amazing possibilities for his character return. And with the whole Paul still journeying the world and capturing Pokemon, but now with the new philosophy, it would kind of interest go in the sorts of um, this dude captured Pokemon, the Pokemon never met the potential, so he released the Pokemon, so he unbefriended them. So it kind of makes go, you know, kind of think of the past way too much, not the Paul that we have now. But it will be, you know, an amazing interaction to have for Go to understand that maybe capturing everyone is not the way to go and he could do something that Chris does in the manga and that's, you know, giving some of the Pokémon, you know, to trainer schools or to battle facilities as rental Pokémon. I would love to see this interaction. And most and foremost, um, please have Torterra return to battle Pikachu. The battle of the starters. Dynamax Torterra healing up with the grass move and sandstorming with Stone Edge because of Max Rockfall. Battling G Max Pikachu? Are you kidding me? Pikachu, the unstoppable force, the sword against Torterra, the immovable object, the shield. OLM, make it happen. Have the starters battle. Infernape and Electivire got their redemption, they got their closure. We need this to happen, please. But yeah, trainers, thank you all so much for watching the video. I really hope that you appreciate it. Make sure to like, comment, share and subscribe. And stay tuned for more content, trainers. And don't forget to catch them all.